Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to today's Ramadan reminder, which is reminder number 12. Today's hadith is narrated by Aisha radiallahu She said the Prophet sallallahu said, do deeds properly, sincerely and moderately. I know that your deeds will not make you enter paradise and jannah. And the most beloved deed to Allah is the most regular and constant, even if it were little. There's two points that I want to draw your attention to from this hadith today. First, do deeds properly, sincerely and moderately. This is a time of the year where we really exert ourselves in voluntary acts. And we really, really try and do as much good deeds as we possibly can. And that is, inshallah, the right attitude. However, after Ramadan, what we need to start understanding is what deeds do we want to continue? How are we going to ensure that we do them properly, sincerely and moderately? There can be times where we can take on too much and we find it difficult to do. So in that case, you need to review what you can be and what you can commit yourself to and ensure that you take on the deeds that you can, inshallah, continue doing and they will not become such a burden for you. So make sure that you take the deeds that you can do. So maybe that you're reading the Quran on a regular basis today or in this month, uh, on these days, I mean. I mean, maybe that you're doing it the hajjud, or you're making, or you're ensuring that you are doing all your sunan um, rakats, uh, sunan muqaddas. And it could be that you're giving lots of sadaqah. So it may be that you're fasting, obviously, in this month, and you want to continue the sunnah fast after Ramadan. If you take on each one of those deeds that I've just mentioned and try to do everything, it, it will be impossible to keep up with everything. So try and do, and if you can do all of them, alhamdulillah, but try and take the deeds that you can do and start off slowly and expand on those deeds, inshallah. So grow. So as you grow as in your deen and in your iman, your deeds should also grow to complement that uh, transition, inshallah. The second thing that I would like to draw your attention to is this part here, where the, in the Hadith of Prophet Sallam said that, know that your deeds will not take you to Jannah. A lot of people from within Islam became to direct out of the folds of Islam, direct themselves out of the folds of Islam because of this very Hadith or because of this very point that the deeds will not take us to Jannah. Therefore, they abandoned doing the deeds. However, in the hadith it says, Bil am You will not enter Jannah with the, not with your deeds, as in this translation, but with the value of your deeds. So the, so the literal translation should be, or the most appropriate translation is with the value of your deeds. So it's not that we can give up our deeds. Yes, we should do our salah, sadqa. If we're doing something, we need to continue doing that because those deeds, when we're performing them, we're trying to perform them so we could obviously reach Jannah. But what we shouldn't do is be blindsided and think that these deeds alone will take us to Jannah without the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we spoke yesterday about Ariya, now Ariya showing off, how many can say that we do every deed sincerely without Ariya? Especially when we spoke how hidden Ariya is. It's so hidden, this unnoticeable. You cannot notice Ariya. So Ariya is unnoticeable. So how can you ensure that your deeds are done sincerely, properly, without showing off, and they are perfect? Nobody can say that their deeds that they've performed are perfect. For example, let's take Hajj. How many people can say their Hajj, the reward of an accepted Hajj is Jannah? How many people can say that they haven't accepted Hajj? Those of you who've gone out to perform Hajj, alhamdulillah, will know that it's a very testing time. You might be a patient person, but there will be people coming from different directions to test your patience. There might be things that go wrong on that day, on the day of Hajj, one thing after the other, after the other. And the frustration and the, the, um, the frustration can build up. You can experience with other people, um, negative experiences that can lead you to lose some of your patients, if not all. And it can lead you to, even if you lost your patients once, 
remember in in the hajj you have to be patient constantly so can everybody see they've been constantly patient throughout the hajj very constantly ignored everything haven't said anything didn't do any sins you know didn't backbite didn't get frustrated didn't lash out you have to take into a lot of consideration and if you've done that did you have sincerity did you have a class did you have a riya showing off we we got to make sure that our deeds are so perfect but every time you try to fix your deeds or try to make them good you will always find that there's something else that you need to fix so we're constantly working to better ourselves and better our deeds because they'll never reach to a perfection level and that is human nature that is human capabilities we can do the you know the x amount of deeds that we possibly can think of but can we ensure that they are performed at the best in the best way at the best time so this is where we have to depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy to help us enter Jannah. Yes, we continue doing our deeds. We continue doing all that we can in order to attain Jannah. But we also have to remember our deeds may not be perfect. Our deeds will definitely actually not be perfect. They cannot be free of uh, riya or you know deceit or there might be some corruption or what's what's from shaitan comes we are unaware sometimes we're unaware that our deeds have become corrupted we may do things and we've already you know realized that subhanallah after the deed after we've done it that oh maybe that deed wasn't done with the real sincerity that i needed or i didn't do the deed with with such good patience and you know i need to repeat it so that doesn't mean be like those people who gave up doing any deeds because they thought that, oh, we're not going to enter Jannah with our deeds. So what is the point of doing uh, doing any good deeds? That's not the meaning of the hadith. The meaning of the hadith is the value of your deeds alone cannot take you to Jannah. You have to depend on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You could do so many deeds, but it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the end who will be merciful and overlook your shortcomings in that deed. We all have shortcomings. We all have shortcomings in us. We have shortcomings when we do these deeds. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we do these deeds, but please forgive us the shortcomings in these deeds and inshallah, through your mercy, enter or submit us to Jannah. An example of shortcomings is when we perform our salah. So a hadith recorded by Imam Ahmad, which says that when we when a person may a person may offer a prayer and nothing of it is recorded for him except one tenth or one ninth or an eighth, seventh, sixth or a fifth going on to a quarter, then a third, then half of it. So it starts off with a tenth and it can go all the way to half. So either your prayer is being reduced and not, nothing of that has been recorded except a tenth of it or it may be that you have performed in performing prayer with the focus, concentration, with making sure that you have the khushu at the right time, at its appointed time, and you've done all the arqans, and you've performed with great dedication and focus and concentration, and you've humbled yourself in prayer. So if we take all these elements, can we really say that our salah is being, a, you know, a record, our salah, the, the reward, of it is being recorded. How much of our salah can we say is being recorded? We perform this deed five times a day, but how much of this deed is it is it getting recorded? This is what we need to ask ourselves. The next hadith is I arrived in Medina. Okay, so I'll continue this one, inshallah. In this hadith, it says, I arrived in Medina and said, Oh Prophet, make it easy for me to find a righteous companion. Now, it is a lengthy hadith, but I'll leave you on the screen for you to read. But what I'm interested in bringing to your attention is this last portion. If anything is lacking from his obligatory prayers, he will say, look and see whether my slave has any voluntary prayers to make up for what is deficient from his obligatory prayers. Then all of his deeds will be dealt with in a like with, within a like manner. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will look at our salah. And in the hadith, they just say, if the salah is sound, then everything else, will, you will be succeeded. But if that's not sound, then you will have lost everything. So voluntary acts 
the voluntary sunnans that we perform or a way in which the deficiency in our obligatory prayers will be made up or covered for. So in this aspect, we need to be performing the more voluntary acts. Because as I said, how many of us can we say that our fun acts have been the best? So if you have any deficiency, like for example, in your salah, so make sure that you do your sunan act to make up for that for that may have deficiency in it. Or if you're giving zakah, give sadqa in case there's deficiency. If you're doing hajj, do some umrah, do voluntary hajj, so you can make up for those deficiencies, inshallah. And this is one of the key messages of this hadith, mashallah, that this is how you, the matter will be dealt with. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he sees deficiency, he'll go to what you have extra of. So you need to perform more extra voluntary acts as well to make up for the deficiencies in the obligatory act. And as I said, please keep on continuing doing good deeds. Make sure that they are constant. Make them regular. And make sure that you take on what you can, inshallah, deal with. Jazakallah khair for listening to today's reminder. Inshallah, see you tomorrow with our next Ramadan reminder. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.